Okay, okay. Hello, everybody. How are you doing out there? This is going to be a special review today. You know why? No, why? Because today, we're going to be talking about a celebrity. The first celebrity for this show. That's wonderful. Hey, uh, who is it? <laughs> who is it? Yeah, who? Well, George. Oh, uh, this is George Getty, by the way. He's, uh, he's new here. Anyway, George, we're going to be talking about a ventriloquist. A ventriloquist who won the 2017 America's Got Talent. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know who it is. Terry Fader. <laughs> Terry Fader. No, no, George. I'm actually talking about Darcy Lynn. Darcy Lynn Farmer. Oh, her. I like her. So do I. A lot of her videos that was on YouTube that's mostly about her are reaching up to the millions. She's becoming more famous on social media than she is on stage. How about that? <laughs> I am so prepared for this review. I have the book. The book that tells the history of Darcy Lynn Farmer. So, with that said, Shall we begin, starting at her birth? And don't worry, I'm not going to go on all details. I'm only going to talk about her when she became famous. So, let's do it again. This is the history from her start. Born in Oklahoma, October 12, 2004, Dicey Lynn Farmer was a young, talented girl. She developed a passion for music, but was but was held back a bit because of her shyness. Feeling hesitant to perform in front of a live audience, her parents decided to enter her into a two, in a 2014 International Cinderella Scholarship Program, where she was crowned International Mini Miss. It was there she met title holder Louisa Bonacquisti. I sure hope I pronounced that name right. A young ventriloquist who inspired her to drive ventriloquism herself. At the same time, she also paid attention to another show, America's, America's Got Talent, where she met Terry Fader. Inspired by what he did, she thought she'd try the same thing. And she did. With a ventriloquy coach by her side and a vocal coach, the following year, she won first place for both Oklahoma Kids and the Junior Division of Oklahoma's Got Talent. And while she was attending Deer Creek Middle School, she missed the first of the seventh grade because she appeared live on AGT. Now that's one talented girl. And speaking of talent, <laughs> it was here she actually got the chance to perform on Little Big Shots. She along with the yodeling cowgirl named Katie. And believe me when I say, the combination of her yodeling and ventriloquism? How often do you see that? That's just amazing! And why does she look like a young Roseanne boy? I have no idea. But this was the Yoling Cowgirl Katie's original design. She went from this, eventually, to that. Uh, uh, Ben? Who, 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 who's that girl? Oh, her? Oh, that's Katie, the Yoling Cowgirl. Uh, um, something wrong? Yeah, 
That cowgirl is giving me a lash. I don't like her. It's the eyes, isn't it? Yes, it's her eyes. She's so demonically possessed. I don't... I don't want to see her. I don't blame her. Some people do find her kind of scary for some reason. Actually, I wouldn't be shocked if Slewfoot Sue taught Katie to that kind of stare. Uh, George, why don't you just sit this one down and now? Uh, I'll... Uh, <coughs> and I'll take over from here, okay? It's all yours, Ben. I'm just gonna wash my face and be rid of the evil within. Yep. Yep, this puppet is all strange. But before Darcy Lynn even had Katie, for the rest of her, uh, youth, she had three other puppets that, sadly, are no longer around. A southern bell squirrel named Scarlet, a little duck named Oki, so he's an okie dokie ducky, and there's an orangutan she has too, but I don't know what its name was. It, it used to be on the web, but now it's suddenly gone, so, yeah, I don't know if that big ape has a name. Sorry. Hey, wait a minute. Based on the way that Katie looks, she might be Baby Laugh-A-Lot, all grown up. <laughs> Run! Ooh, I just got chills. And if you thought Katie looked so weird now, Take a look at her way back then. And here she is on America's Got Talent, along with the puppet of her choice, a pop diva rabbit named Petunia. Oh, she'll be a bigger name in the ventriloquism world, I can guarantee it. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's their real reaction, folks. They're blown away by an operatic rabbit. Wow. Even Simon admits it. He's standing up in a standing ovation with the others. Simon, what, what took you so long, idiot? Oh, Darcy's crying. She's crying in happiness. Yep, a golden buzzer. That's all it took to get Darcy to win audiences over. And look at this. Her mother came out to the stage to hug her sweet little Darcy. I said her mother came out. Thank you. Did you see that? Did you see that? She punched Petunia. <coughs> Poof. Poof. Shh. Be very, very quiet. I'm punching wabbits. <laughs> Even Mel B went up to the stage to give Darcy a hug as well. You are so adorable. I'm so sweet. Oh, my God. Thank you for coming on. Oh, isn't that sweet of her? Who would have thought that a Spice Girl herself would give sweet little Darcy the golden buzzer? As Darcy's way of saying thank you to Mel B, she got to perform her second puppet, Oscar the Mouse, the Motown Mouse. Or should I say, in this case, the Chucky Finster Mouse. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie when I say that. He looks exactly a lot like Chucky. The same red hair, same pair of glasses, same buck teeth. He's even nervous. 
Naturally, Oscar is a little rug rat. Let's see. What else is... Ah! We come to her now. Oh my, I almost forgot about her. A dear sweet old woman that has a thing for Simon. Her name is Edna Doorknocker. And she... <laughs> she has a thing for Simon. And if there's one thing we know about Darcy Lynn, she knows how to win judges over. And here's what she did. She picked up Edna and took her off the stage down to Simon and continued singing to him. Look at her. She's singing to Simon. He's blushing like crazy. A puppet. An old woman puppet winning him over. Originally, Darcy was hoping to have Simon come up to the stage so she can continue singing to him. Unfortunately, the producers decided it might, it possibly might not work. So she decided to went down there and go to him instead. How do I know that? Because Darcy said it herself in a reaction video on YouTube. Check out her website, it's really fun. Boy, sh boy, that Darcy Lynn knows how to win everybody over, does she? One smart child. Hmm, she's not done with AGG yet. She's got one more performance to do. And that's with Petunia and Oscar together. Those two together, believe it or not, they decided to sing a Beatles song. A song written by two Beatles performed by two rodents. Yeah, why the hell not? Oh, Oscar, you sang that last note so strange like. That last note you just sang, it tells you right away. In my mind, it tells you you're struggling to get the small tiny poop that's stuck in there out for a long time. And then, <laughs> and now it's out. <laughs> Moving on. No, that's not it. Oh, way too personal. No, no, no. Nope. Ah, here it is. Wait. The biggest moment of her life, the last episode of America's Got Talent, between her and a sweet little girl named. Looks like it says Angelica. Tyra, would you kindly tell us all who the winner is? That was a moment that everybody loved. She loved. She actually won. Angelica hugged her, her mother cried, her brothers rushed to the stage to hug their sweet little sister. What a victory she did! Oh, congratulations, Darcy Lynn! You made the family so proud. And her career and fame had just begun. A young Vince Grace's journey is beginning. Darcy Lynn said in an interview that if she wins America's Got Talent, she would win a puppy. And since she did win, guess what she got? You do with a million dollars. I really want a puppy, and so I'm going to get a pug if I win. And that's her dog to this very day. Welcome to Binks Box. I'm your host, Binks. This is Darcy. She's my favorite human, by far. My favorite thing to do is give her hugs. Okay, I did not see that coming. Did you? And while George is taking a nap, 
This might be a great time for me to tell you about the Christmas special. I'll make it short and sweet. There she is with her little friends, and this time her variety of guest stars appeared. There's country singer Toby Keefe, who came to her courtesy of the red, white, and blue, along with Christian Chenoweth, I think that's her last name, and the four judges she knew on America's Got Talent appeared there too. Simon, Mel B, Howie Mandel, and Heidi Klum. I honestly never saw the Christmas special. I didn't even know about it. But after seeing some clips on YouTube, I think I might be curious enough to check it out. She appeared again on AGT and performed new songs never. When's the last time you heard Petunia sing Italian opera? Or Oscar Mouse singing Bowling on the River? Hey, George. Hmm? Do you know that song that Petunia sang? Oh, yeah. I know how it goes. Would you be kind enough to sing it for them? Sing it for them? No, sing it for them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Summertime. Uh, um. I feel somehow weaker. Sit and spread your wings so you can soar to the sky. That's not the lyrics. Yes, I know, but I don't know the whole damn song. Seriously? Yes. Ah, George. And she's done a few more performances on that show as well. As a guest performer. She performed alongside Ralph the Dog, a Muppet, with Edna Doorknocker. What a lucky moment for her to be performing alongside a Muppet. And because Edna sang a song about Simon again, this time around, Simon came up to her and kissed her. You, Edna, are one lucky bag of bones. It was around 2020 that she introduced a brand new friend. And since George is being a little weird right now, I think it's time we talk about another weird thing that happened. Darcy bringing out her new character, a purple people eater named Ivan. And believe me, he looks like a purple people eater too. Huh? What's better? He's not the purple people eater? I see. He's just an Australian one eyed bandicoot. What the hell is he anyway? Yeah, let's do it! She had me going crazy. Oh, I was starstruck. She woke me up daily. Don't need no job. She made my heart pound. It's gonna be when I see her in the street or oh, at school on the playground. But I really wanna see her on the weekend. She knows she got me dazing. Cause she was so amazing. Oh, Darcy Lynn and Terry Fader, too. Listen to me. I have a request for you. I wish that you two would make a web video of you singing Pixar's Lava. Birds fly over the rainbow. Why, man, oh, why can't I? Hey, not bad. Thank you. <laughs> hmm? Hey, what's that? Over there.
You're a bluebird, I assume. No, no, no. That's a brownie bird. Weird looking one, too. They call me the human puffer fish Cause I sound like the volcano who sings The song Lava After she won America's Got Talent People have been asking her to do all sorts of projects It wasn't long before Warner Brothers asked her to do an episode Of Scooby Doo and Guess Who The latest in the franchise that will never die And here she is in her own animated caricature form, along with her friend Petunia. And yes, Petunia has a song to sing. I'm so very shy, I can't tell you why. I'm just so very shy, flying high in the sky. And Good thing Petunia learned how to sing in front of them, <laughs> otherwise Scooby-Doo would have killed her. Oh, yep, this is her in her Scooby-Doo form, in the episode Too Many Dummies, an episode of Scooby-Doo and Guess Who. However, she is not alone. She is alongside this man. Hey, that's jeff -a -a dunham Yes, it is Jeff Dunham. Jeff Dunham and Walter. Although I do have to ask, why Walter? He's grumpy. Shouldn't you go for Ahmed? You could have made ton of jokes with him and Scooby-Doo. But then again, I digress. Oh, yeah. She did a lot of stuff with Jeff Fafa Dunham, for sure. Jeff Dunham appeared just before she was finished with her AGT season. You got a hair on your arm. <laughs> and you wouldn't think out of all people, Walter would actually compliment Petunia. An old man who is grumpy as hell complimenting a bunny? Tell her to make Darcy happy. Are they going? Yeah, they are. Look, I need you to do me a favor. What? Help Darcy make her dreams come true. Absolutely will, Walter. Good. You know, you're a nice old man. Yeah, whatever. I guess he's having a change of heart. Or he's just doing it because Jeff told him to. Hey, is Tyra around here? I sure hope Scooby-Doo isn't like that with all dummies and puppets. Don't worry, Petunia. He's only like that to Ackman, which is more than I can say for a cancelled cultured mutt. But it wasn't the only time she did something with Jeff. She actually appeared in one of Jeff Dunham's videos, The Haunted House on the Hill. She and her three little friends are all begging for candy. I'll take a Snickers! Darcy got a can of soup. Oscar's got... What does he got? Peanut butter cuts, circus peanuts, peanut in the nans, peanut brittle, and nerds? Nerds! Edna flirting with Walter? You better believe this is going to be a funny video. Ah! You dropped your bunny! You dropped your bunny! I think this might be a good time for a sudden hail break. What's a hail break? Well, it's a break between my editing process to give you a, a break in the weather. A hailstorm that came past here in Michigan early April.
He and his dummy friends are all there together. Peanut, Walter, Bubba J, and Ahmed the Dead Terrorist. The only one that scared the living shit out of Petunia. Silence! I treat you! <laughs> You like that? Yeah, that's funny. Darcy, you're a cartoon. <laughs> but it wasn't just Scooby Doo and Guess Who she guest starred in. Other shows she also appeared in, such as Fancy Nancy, Kids Bacon Championship, All That, Camp Nick, Winner Cake All, Ryan's Mystery Playdate, Nickelodeon's Unfiltered, Side Hustle, and her first streaming movie. A cowgirl song. She even performed the song in there. Just breathe, let go of the past. Just breathe. There's one other thing she's doing right now. Right now, as I'm recording this review, she's filming a movie called Reagan. A movie that's based on the life of actor, politician, California governor, and president of the United States, Ronald Reagan. It's in development right now, and there's no telling when it's going to be released. All I know is, I'm think, I hope Darcy has fun making this movie. Whatever part she's going to play, I hope she pulls it off wonderfully. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And so, we come to the conclusion of Darcy Lynn, at least up to date, and pretty much Huh? Oh man, I don't like Box Theater. When she gets done making Megan, what's gonna happen to her afterward? Will she have more television specials, like the Christmas Hometown one? Nah, maybe an animated short focused on her characters. That's a possibility. Is she going to be on tour again? That's a definitely maybe. Maybe she'll go big on Broadway. Or release an album of her choice. Those are possibly maybe too. But whatever happens to that young ventriloquist girl, one thing for sure, fans will all be there waiting for her and supporting her, along with her own family. And the judges who made her successful. Well, now you know something about that lucky girl from Oklahoma and what a proud and wonderful career she has. Someday we'll be hearing wonderful things about that 20-year-old woman. But until then, we'll just close the book on Petunia. Ah! Sorry. I'm Big Bad Ben. And Darcy, if you're watching, thank you for watching. And thank you for listening. I hope your career goes as well now that you're an adult. Now, uh, if you all excuse me, I can prepare my next review for a certain, um, oh yeah, for a certain event that's coming up. And I gotta prepare for that while I'm at it. Bye.